Hello, I'd like to give you a quick video introduction to our new online article called A Visual Introduction to Gaussian Belief Propagation by Joe Ortiz, Talfan Evans and myself. And you can find that online at gaussianbp.github.io. So the purpose of this article is to explain, introduce and motivate uh, Gaussian belief propagation as a very general and useful algorithm for distributed estimation in, uh, in, in vision, robotics, and, and related things in AI. So we're interested in problems that can be represented as probabilistic uh, graphical models and specifically factor graphs, where a probability distribution over various variables of interest, x1, x2, x3 here, can be represented as a product of terms where each of those terms depends on some subset of the variables. So that is well pictured by a factor graph here, where as you see, I hover over each of these terms and it highlights uh, a factor. And you can see that that factor connects the variables that that factor uh, depends on. So there are many algorithms for performing inference on factor graphs, which means determining probability distributions over the variables of interest given knowledge of the factors, which are generally things you can observe like measurements from sensors. We're particularly interested in this article in belief propagation ways of solving that. So that is basically a set of methods for determining those marginal distributions by passing messages around the factor graph. So here are all the details of what those messages actually are. We're going to specifically be interested in the Gaussian case where all factors are representing Gaussian distributions over the variables they're connected to, and therefore the marginal estimates we're trying to obtain are also marginal distributions. Uh, so when you have a graph that doesn't have any cycles in it, uh, belief propagation can actually achieve uh, perfect estimates of the, of the marginals just by passing messages one way up the graph. So for instance, from a tree node down to leaves and then all the way back up again. Uh, when you have a graph with cycles, which is the, the normal and general case, then belief propagation needs to iterate, but actually it can it iterate to, to, to really uh, good or even perfect solutions really quite efficiently. And specifically in the Gaussian case, this really uh, performs very well. And, and that's really what we're going to try and show you in this uh, article. So let's move to a couple of the interactive uh, examples that we have. So the most simple one down here is a 1D line fitting problem. So essentially we've got a set of uh, data measurements here. So these might be the positions of heights above a surface, for instance, observed by some sensor. And we're trying to estimate uh, the height of the surface at a regular uh, kind of spacing of variable positions here. So our factor graph looks something like this, where the variables are connected uh, to the measurements. These are these data factors here. And note that each data factor connects to two uh, of the variables because we assume that the measurement lie, might lie somewhere in between the actual positions of the variables. But then we also have smoothness factors. So this is some extra assumption. Actually, there's a smoothness to the whole kind of surface that we're trying to to estimate here. So our overall solution should be some balance between those two types of factors. Uh, so let's look at this uh, example here. So I'm going to first clear away the data and just define some myself. So I can just do this by making a few clicks here. So these are like a few uh, measurements. And actually, before I start doing belief propagation, I can just do this, which shows us what the actual kind of solution to this factor graph inference problem would be using a standard uh, non-message passing algorithm. But now I'm going to show you when I click this sweep button, we're going to solve this by belief propagation. So here we're passing messages along this chain of variables and factors from left to right, and then all the way back from right to left. And because this is a, a graph with no cycles, just doing that once there and back gives us perfect uh, marginal uh, estimates here. Um, but let's just try something a bit different. So if I clear the, the data away and then define some new data, um, what now if instead of passing messages left and right, I just consider that each of these nodes are like a, a parallel uh, independent uh, com computer 
and get them all to pass messages at the same time. So essentially each of these nodes on every time I click this one iter button is passing messages to its neighbors. And you can see that I don't need to do that too many times until we converge again to the exact same solution uh, that we had before. But clearly this is something that would be possible to implement in an entirely parallel uh, distributed way. So let me show you something that I found even more surprising when, when I first saw it working. So let's again define uh, data here, but now I'm just gonna click this random message button. So now every time I click this, a, a random uh, variable is gonna pass a message in a random direction. And if we just keep doing this enough times, again, we converge to it to exactly the same uh, solution. We may need just a couple more iterations here to get it to be exactly right, because clearly we have to be lucky that all of the factors send and receive uh, uh, some messages, but we can con converge to, to, to exactly the same thing. Um, and there are some other really nice properties of solving a, a problem like this with belief propagation. So for instance, we can just drop in, you know, a couple of other uh, measurements here, which you know would affect the solution, but we don't need to resolve everything. If we just apply a few more iterations of local message passing, we can see that we can quickly adapt our earlier solution to now a, a situation with slightly different uh, data. Um, so I'm going to move up to another part of the article here where we show uh, a slightly different problem. So rather than being a 1D line fitting problem, this is now a 2D problem, which is very much like a, a sort of pose graph in robotics. So we've got a set of uh, kind of nodes here in, in 2D, which are making relative measurements of each other. So these kind of lines connecting them are like representing the, the factors which are relative uh, measurements between 2D nodes. And again, we can solve this using this synchronous uh, belief propagation. So this means that each uh, node in parallel is passing messages to some of its neighbors. So this might be a good model, for instance, for a network of, of robots that are all in communication with each other and trying to come up with a global estimate of their positions with purely local uh, computation and message passing. And again, uh, we can show that random message passing works here. So, you know, random message passing isn't necessarily something you would ever actually do, but it's almost presents a worst case of being, you know, as sort of uh, non-clever as possible about a, a pattern of passing messages. And it's just kind of remarkable that it still does actually work and, and, and converge. So I think, yeah, we, we can actually force it to send messages from particular nodes by clicking on them. So there's lots of different sort of interactions you can do in this article to, to try different things out. And again here, yeah, we're converging to, to, the, to the best solution. Um, yeah, so, so that so far is just pure kind of Gaussian problems, but there's a couple more details which I think are really important in terms of making Gaussian belief propagation really generally useful and, and really bring it to be useful in, in almost all of the problems that we're used to tackling in, in vision and robotics. So one is that we can deal with nonlinear factors where the actual uh, measurement is a nonlinear factor of, of the variables. And we do that using the same sort of trick that we use in any sort of um, uh, you know, estimation and extended Kalman filter or a kind of linearization in a nonlinear solver, which is to basically linearize factors whenever we, we need to. So this is just showing how a general nonlinear function can always be fitted to, to the sort of closest Gaussian distribution, if, if you like, that linearizes that factor. In Gaussian belief propagation, we can do that kind of on demand and locally. So every time a factor passes a message, we can look at its kind of current uh, points and, and linearize it uh, as, as necessary in a completely dynamic way. The other really important thing is that we can cope with robust uh, factors in, in, in Gaussian belief propagation. So this is a really important thing in most types of estimation where you want to assume probably that your sensor works not necessarily in a purely Gaussian way, but with some probability of just, you know, getting garbage measurements sometime. So, so that's usually represented uh, by the family of, of functions called M estimators where you would represent a, so, so here rather than showing a Gaussian, we're, we're showing the kind of log of the Gaussian, which is a parabola, a squared function. 
uh, uh, here the blue line is showing a Huber kernel, which is a, a, a a, um, a squared function which after some transition point transitions off into a, a, a linear uh, function. Um, so what we do in Gaussian belief propagation is we, you know, the messages we have to send around uh, the network always have to represent Gaussians, but essentially once we're outside of, of the bounds of, of this Huber crossover here, we send a weaker Gaussian message which has the same energy that a Huber function would have at that, at that value. Um, so you can read more about the details of that, but this actually shows you how it works in our 1, 1D line fitting problem. So here we've got some data which has been laid out with a lot of points which largely lie on a straight line, but we've got a couple of gross outliers here. If we just run uh, synchronous GBP, so GBP is just running continuously in the background here, and we're just using the standard squared energy function you can see that the fitted line is quite heavily affected by these couple of outlying measurements. Whereas when we turn on the, the Huber kernel here, we can see it does a much better job of ignoring uh, these outliers. Um, we could try something a little bit uh, different here. So let's go to some sort of step data. So this is representing you know, a, a, a set of points up here and then a sudden step down to some points here. If we run optimization with the squared uh, uh, estimator, we get this behavior where it kind of tends to just blur out this edge here. Whereas when we turn on the, the Huber kernel, we get this much nicer kind of edge preserving behavior. So that is the sort of property which makes this uh, you know, usable in things like image processing. And we have an example of that uh, in, in the paper here. So here's a kind of image uh, processing example. Um, so we've got an input image here that has some noise in it and we would like to denoise this image, remove this kind of speckly noise. And we're going to do that by defining a fact graph that looks something like this. So it's exactly the kind of 2D version of the 1D line fitting problem where we have data terms at each pixel uh, and then we also have smoothness terms. So we're trying to reconstruct an image which as far as possible is, is close to this input image but also has smoothness uh, properties defined by the smoothness factors. So as we turn up, so, so G GBP is running all, all the time in, in the background here. As we turn up the strength of the smoothness factors with a squared uh, energy function, we'll see that we can remove the noise, but at the cost of blurring the whole image. Whereas when we turn on a, a Huber function here, we can, we can remove the noise, but, but while, um, uh, not destroying edges in the image. So this is like edge preserving uh, smoothing, which can be done, uh, you know, there's been many algorithms for this in the past, but it can be done very, very effectively by Gaussian belief propagation uh, with this uh, non, uh, with this robust uh, Huber kernel. So there's some other neat things built into the web page here. So for instance, rather than using this fixed input image, you can actually switch it to, to capture live uh, video from the from the webcam, so so this is this is me. I can now in in real time here and all processed within the web page, you know, just smooth my face out use, using a using a Huber kernel, and, and you can see how fast that works. So you know, behind the scenes here in the web page, we're using WebGL to uh, to accelerate uh, this. Um, okay, uh, so oh, just one last thing to show you is is also this idea of of attention. So, you know, Gaussian belief propagation is completely flexible and you don't need to apply it evenly over a whole image. So in this example, we only kind of apply belief propagation within this small uh, region defined by, by the circle here. So this is, is at the moment, you know, I am controlling here by moving this circle where the processing is done, but this could potentially be done algorithmically. And, and that's maybe some of the nicest things to explore in these sort of algorithms, how to do that processing in a much more active way to focus your kind of message passing effort where it would uh, most be needed. Okay, so I think that's uh, the end of uh, what I wanted to show you. So uh, please take a look at the article. I, I should say that most of the uh, cool interactive stuff that you've seen here is down to Joe uh, Ortiz, who's, who's done all the, all the programming uh, behind this. So yeah, 
please take a look and send us any uh, feedback and we'd, we'd love to know what you think. Thank you.